And we're joined now by the Republican Westchester County Executive and now Republican nominee for Governor, Rob Astorino. Mr. Astorino, congratulations. Thank you, Andrew. Good to see you. Let's start with, uh, let me start with yesterday and the stuff at the, at the bridge with President Obama. And we heard stuff, uh, a lot of things from the podium today that Obama was coming to traffic, uh, coming to town in part to throw people off from what was happening here. And then the kerfuffle about seating arrangements and, and it even made front page news and for one of the tabloids today. <laughs> what happened yesterday? And, and do you really think the president was looking to slight you? Oh, I don't think it was the president at all. Uh, in fact, the White House was very gracious. They, uh, through the right protocol, you know, as the chief elected official in Westchester where the press conference is, uh, we were told that, you know, we were going to sit up front with the other elected officials. The Bronx Borough president was in the front row. And um, I was doing interviews, and, you know, uh, Phil Oliva, who's my deputy director of communications, uh, was then overheard uh, the governor's staff uh, tell the White House staff, no, 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 no. And so uh, Ed Day, who's the Republican county executive of Rockland, the other county affected by the bridge, we and I uh, just stood in the back and watched it. So it's okay. All right. Kind of petty, though, but it's all right. Okay, so we'll move past that, and uh, there are some things that have been going on here the what's last couple here? of days or so. What's going on? Uh, you're, you're now the nominee for the Republican Party, mm -hmm. uh, looking to do something that the Republican Party has not done in 12 years, which is win a statewide office, much less win the office of governor. Let's start with the politics of all this. What's your path to the governor's mansion in, the, in November? 30 points down in some polls, 70% uh, of voters say they don't know enough about you to form an opinion. 69 percent now. They're watching the show. Uh, uh, thank you very much. How do you go from there to the governor's mansion in Albany? Same way we did that in uh, 2009 when I was running for county executive. 30 points down. Incumbent had boatloads of money, high name ID. They said, Rob who? That's what their campaign was. And um, we had the right message, the right timing. We raised enough money to get our message out, and we won. And it would be the same thing this year. First of all, Andrew Cuomo has a record, and it's atrocious. You know, we are dead last 50th in all the wrong categories. Highest taxes, worst business climate, worst business outlook, economic outlook. Uh, we've got the most in education money we put in per pupil, and we're in the bottom half of results. And now we know the Anti-Corruption Commission has been corrupted, and it's filthy. And Andrew Cuomo may very well, because he's being investigated by the U.S. Attorney, may have, in fact, investigated, uh, led to uh, moving people out of the investigation and quashed subpoenas and directly involved himself in what was supposed to be and is an independent commission. So this state is uh, going down the wrong track. There's no question about it. 400,000 New Yorkers have left. That doesn't sound like a winning record to me. It doesn't sound like a state in the win column. So we have the ideas to turn this state around. We have the message. I think the climate is right. And it's all I hear. Everywhere I go, it's all I hear. And you know what? Here's an interesting thing. Almost 50% of the total vote in a governor's race comes from upstate. It's not New York City. Upstate. And upstate is tumbleweeds right now economically. They're doing very badly. And the one solution that would take them, you know, not to the promised land, but would certainly turn it around pretty quickly is natural gas exploration, which this governor refuses to do. Basically the only governor in the United States that is not moving forward with this. You are obviously going to try to play on the fiscal issues and, and the economy, the, the state of New York's economy, uh, and you're trying to paint Andrew Cuomo as being problematic in that mm -hmm. regard. Governor Cuomo is trying to define you on primarily social terms, social issue terms. Where your positions are, to be honest, further to the right than, the, than where the polls say the majority of New Yorkers are on issues like, like guns or, or, or on abortion or other social issues that do matter to people. How do you square that with voters and still get them to pull the lever for you or whatever the system is on the ballot these days, <laughs> um, given that your positions, that you are a social conservative and, and you're proud to call yourself that? So in two to one Democrat Westchester, this was the playbook in 2009. It didn't work. We won big. They crossed off the year and put 2013 as our playbook. Let's attack them again on social issues. It didn't work. We won by 13 points. Now it's 2014. Let's do it again. Let's keep trying. You know, ultimately, people have their opinions. Uh, if you're talking about abortion, uh, abortion's not going anywhere in New York State. It's been legal here for 44 years, three years before Roe v. Wade. Abortion's not going anywhere. Whatever my personal view is, and I am pro-life, is not going to make much of a difference in the state of New York. 
But what I won't do, and what is so radical and so different, by the way, of what the average New Yorker thinks, I will not expand it to the third trimester, which is what Andrew Cuomo wants to do. That is so radical and so out of step with New Yorkers. You, you talked about your re-election for county executive last year, and, and in that election, the issue of guns and gun shows came up. Yeah. And, you, and you suggested, and, and I think to your, to your credit, that's not really an issue of gun control or gun law that an, a county executive has a lot of impact on. But a governor certainly does. Mm -hmm. and, and even on something like abortion, there are, there, which you say is settled and isn't coming back, certainly it would be within the governor's purview to have a much greater influence on social matters that issue to people. So why, why are those social arguments from the left not valid in this case? Because this is in Arkansas. We have a New York City-dominated, very liberal, democratic assembly that would never pass something like that. So the reality is it's a boogeyman and a smokescreen, so he doesn't have to deal with the economics, which, of course, we know, put us dead last in the country in all the wrong categories. Him harping on social issues is not going to bring taxes down so people could actually stay here and work here. It's not going to bring the jobs back that have left because of his policies. So he's going to talk about that. It'll be the boogeyman. It's always been. And, but most people, you know what? They're going to look at how do I get back to work how does my grandma be able to live in her home because she's got to go back to work now to pay the property taxes? How does my son or daughter have a chance after college to find a job here? That's what people care about, and that's what I'm going to talk about like I did in 09 and like I did in 13. Just one more question on the social issue front, if I could. Uh, the, obviously, you think that you can win the governor's mansion mm -hmm. uh, this fall. If in doing so, if, if everybody's prediction of a wave or a, a, a Republican-leaning election is true, pretty good chance that Republicans win the state Senate mm -hmm. and would at least make inroads in the state assembly. You had a speaker at your dinner last night, Tom Corbett, mm -hmm. who won under similar circumstances four years ago in Pennsylvania. He's now polling in the 20s because of what people perceive as an overreach on social issues, including voting rights, including abortion, including other uh, at labor unions. Uh, again, the concern, you know, you say it's all settled and that abortion isn't going to be relitigated in New York State. There are a lot of people who feel like that's a cornerstone issue or that other social issues you know impact their way? daily lives. Um, the Andrew Cuomo campaign team. That's it. Most New Yorkers, this is not what they're thinking about. When they get on a bus to go to work or a train or they're, they're stuck in traffic or they're worrying how they're going to pay the bills for their house or someone just got laid off, at the, will they find work or the property taxes are due? That's what they're worried about. They're not worried every day my God, is abortion going to be legal in New York? Come on. I mean, this is such a false argument, but it's their playbook. It's the only thing they know how to do because they can't win on the argument of why 400,000 New Yorkers have left, why more are leaving, why 41 percent in a recent Gallup poll, 41 percent of New Yorkers said if they could leave New York, they would. That is damning to the policies we now have. And so, you know, if that's the way you want this state to go, if you want a debt economy upstate for a long time, uh, very slow growth and extraordinarily high taxes in the Hudson Valley and Long Island, if you want Cuomo's Common Core to continue on and, and make it disastrous for our children, then you should vote for him. If you want changes, like I do, I'm a parent. My wife and I are choosing to stay here to fight because I have a 10-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 4-year-old. Sheriff Moss has an 8-year-old son. We're here fighting for this state before it's too late because we are in a death spiral. One of the fiscal planks that you're building your economic policy on has been hydrofracking mm -hmm. uh, in the southern tier and in other portions of the state. Um, can, do you know how many jobs under a Governor Astorino that would create for New York? And can you say to people who are concerned about it at home, it's 100 percent safe, no reason to worry about it? Well, I'll just say what the EPA says, what the Energy Department says, what President Obama says, what Senators Gillibrand and Schumer say, what 30 other states and governors are saying, many Democrats. It is safe. It is working. It is creating jobs. It is creating billions in revenue for education uh, and, and money that goes into the coffers of governments to help pay for the essential services. It's bringing down energy costs. It's clean for the environment. And, you know, for those who say, well, it's going to kill us all. I mean, really? I'm a father. Do you think I would do something that would make it dangerous for my kids or your kids? First and foremost, we're going to protect the public health. That's what we do. We're going to protect the public health. 
protect the drinking supply, and put the proper regulations in place, and then move forward. We're not going to say to oil and gas companies, come on in, do what you want to do, rape the land and leave when you're ready. I mean, really? That's not what we're going to do. That's how they'll portray it, which is silly, but that's not what we're, we would do, and that's not what 30 other states are doing. You did, however, sign a bill as county executive about the disposal of materials from fracking in Westchester County. How do you square the, your signature for that law with your position that fracking is completely safe? One has nothing to do with the other. I am in favor of nuclear energy, but I wouldn't have spent fuel rods in my home, uh, and it would be similar. You know, we wanted to learn more about it. This was two and a half years ago, that bill or whatever. It passed unanimously. We don't have natural gas in Westchester. I, I wish we did, but we don't. Uh, but for communities and counties and this state, it is a blessing and it is uh, an insult to the people who are desperately needing a job and a career that can't pay taxes, that want to live here but are moving out because there is no hope. It's an insult for Andrew Cuomo to sit there and say, you're on your own because my political career comes first. And then finally, uh, when it comes to economic issues, uh, how many jobs can you create in the first year of a Rob Astorino administration? And uh, are you willing to lay down any marker in terms of if I don't create X number of jobs or lead to this level of improvement in the economy, that's it? That's what that's the criteria to, to judge me on? Well, just get back to your own question before about the uh, natural gas. The state's DEC estimates 25 to 50,000 jobs created by natural gas. I was in um, just near Binghamton, Vestal Concrete, uh, Vestal Asphalt, and the owner said that he would add 80 to 100 jobs immediately if natural gas exploration continued or was started in, in New York. He right now is doing well because his trucks and his workers are going to Pennsylvania. There's two Tioga counties, by the way. Tioga County, New York, Tioga County, Pennsylvania. Both are in the natural gas shell. Shell. Tiger County, Pennsylvania, doing great. Money coming in, taxes coming in, cars are being sold, people going out to dinner, people are employed. Tioga County, New York, unemployment is high, no job growth whatsoever. People are moving, they can't pay their taxes. And we're looking across the border, and it's like East Berlin and West Berlin. New York, tumbleweeds. Pennsylvania, growth. And it's something that we cannot be afraid of. We're not first into this, by the way. We're last. So we'll have learned from everyone else. And it's something that we need to move forward. The regulations, whether I talk to farmers and their small business owners or anyone, the regulations are killing businesses in New York. That's why businesses are just shuttering their doors and leaving. Got one more political question yeah, to ask because I, I can't help myself. <laughs> uh, heard from a couple of people at the convention today who looked around and said, you know what, there, there's no Republicans or very few Republicans from the state Senate who are here for this convention, not a whole lot of Republicans from the state Assembly here for this convention. Some saying, you know, that, that shows either the threats that are coming from Governor Cuomo or the leverage that he holds. No. Are you disappointed in that level of turnout? And do you think that the governor has been trying to pressure Republicans to somehow stay away for fear of reprisals going forward? No. Look, uh, Dean Skelos, the majority leader, was here. Uh, there were a lot of assembly people and senators that I saw and talked to. Um, you know, look, this is not really about them. This is not their convention necessarily. Uh, you know, it was for me. It was for Sheriff Moss. It was for the controller. It was for the attorney general. And we packed this room with supporters and just everyday people who want to see this turn, this state turned around. And I loved looking around and seeing the young kids here the diversity in this room. There were some Democrats in this room, uh, including, by the way, Senator Ruben Diaz, who was here. So, um, you know, uh, that that's just political nonsense. All right. Uh, Rob Astorino. Hey, Andrew, thank you. Republican nominee for governor of the state of New York. Thanks very much. Thank you. And that is the latest from here at the Republican State Convention. Rich, let's send it back to you in the studio.